All right, we're going to be talking more about number sense and factors um, in our study of how do stockholders use math. We're still learning some of those things. Uh, and continuing with index notation uh, with our study of factors and things. And we, we talked about index notation being a shortcut for multiplication. And so 7 to the power of 3 would be 7 times 7 times 7. But what does that actually mean? What is 7 to the power of 3? Um, is it 73? Okay, is 7 to the power of 3 21? 7 times 3? Is it uh, 10? 7 plus 3? What is it? Well, when we're looking, it's really none of these. If we think about what index notation means, 7 to the power of 3 has a base number of 7 and an index of 3, which means it's the base 7 multiplied over and over again. And how many times is it multiplied? Well, that's what the index number is. 7 to the power of 3 okay, is equal to 7 times 7 times 7. But what, again, does that really mean? 7 times 7 is 49. So if we simplify it a little, then it's 49 times 7. And if I multiply 49 times 7, we find out that 7 to the power of 3 is actually the same thing as 343. That's quite a bit larger number um, than what it looks like it might be. Index numbers are short ways for writing some very large numbers uh, that can be made by multiplying the same number over and over again. Um, again, what about 2 to the power of 5? Okay, It's not 10, it's not 2 times 5, but 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Five twos multiplied over and over again. How do I simplify that? Well, I might multiply 2 times 2, and the next 2 times 2 gives me another 4 and a 4, and I still have one 2 left over. Maybe I multiply... Uh, the 4 times 2 and gives me 8, and 4 times 8 is equal to 32. So 2 to the power of 5 is really a short way of representing the number 32. Okay, so what does an index number mean? It depends. If we need to expand it, we might need to write it out and then multiply all of those parts. Okay. Very rarely will you know what the answer is just by looking at it. It's not quite as simple as 2 times 5 or something like that. Okay. Another one, 10 to the power of 6. It's not 16, it's not 60, it's not even 600. It's the number 10 base multiplied over and over and over again. So we need to write it all the way out. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Okay. And we can simplify. 10 times 10 is... 100. So if I have 10 times 10, that's my first 100. And then another 10 times 10 gives me my second 100. And then another 10 times 10 gives me my third 100. 100 times 100 is 10,000. And 10,000 times 100 is 1 million. So 10 to the power of 6, a very small number, actually represents a million. Now, with number 10, the base number 10, we have some special interesting patterns that happen, and that is that if you notice how many zeros there are at the end of the number, and you compare that to the index number of six, you'll notice there are six zeros. And for tens, that's always true. Ten to the power of nine would have nine zeros. Ten to the power of four would have four zeros after the one. Okay? That is only true for index numbers with 10 as the base, or we sometimes call them base 10 numbers. Okay, you, that's not going to work for 8 to the power of 6. Okay, that, that pattern is not true. Okay, so it's just one special one. We do often use 10 as a base number, though. All right, that's all. Next, we're going to be looking at how to actually work with index numbers, and can I combine them together or not.